There are three versions of Lightroom, and that can be pretty confusing because as of now, they're called Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, and Lightroom Mobile. Now this has been a branding nightmare because if you go back all the way to like 2007, when us photographers first started using it, it was just called Lightroom. And then Adobe wanted to go to the subscription model, the cloud model, so they could then get us to buy online storage. and. The main Lightroom desktop app is Lightroom Classic. So in a sense, Lightroom 6 is also Lightroom Classic. The bottom line is that is the main, that's the biggest Lightroom. Then you have Lightroom, which is a terrible name for it because most people use Lightroom Classic. To them, that is Lightroom. But when Adobe says Lightroom, which they used to call Lightroom CC, now called Lightroom, they mean the stripped down desktop version of Lightroom Classic that used to be called Lightroom. I'm sure you've noticed Adobe has done a terrible job of branding and educating people on the versions of Lightroom. Most people don't even understand the difference between Lightroom and Photoshop when they're starting out. Really, I think the Lightroom confusion is entirely their fault. I think they intentionally made it confusing to drive people to the online version of Lightroom, because guess what? The online version of Lightroom uses storage and Adobe can then sell you something more on top of that subscription that you already have. But let's get back to basics and let's start with the real Lightroom, which is now called Lightroom Classic. This is the one that goes all the way back to, I wanna say 2007 when I first started using it in the original beta. It stopped being an independent app in Lightroom 7. So up to Lightroom 6, you could buy it. And there's a lot of people that have hung on to just that Lightroom 6 app and refuse to upgrade. And as a developer of, of presets and workshops and tools, I try to support Lightroom 6 as much as possible, although it's getting pretty old now. Lightroom Classic, bottom line, is probably what you're gonna wanna use if you want to do serious photography. Let's just give a really quick overview. You can come into Lightroom Classic and it is a catalog-based system. So you're going to import photos into Lightroom and then you can come in here and you can edit those photos. So if I go in here and I say, all right, here's a photo, I'm going to go to natural HDR and apply a preset, right? I'm gonna give an HDR preset. I'm gonna go over here and use the sliders, right? Let's do this manually. Let's reset it completely and let's do a manual edit. Let's turn up our shadows, pull down our highlights, tweak with our colors, our curves a little bit, right? So you can edit this just like you would in something like Camera Raw. The important thing to understand about using this is everything I'm doing to this photo is part of the Lightroom catalog, which is stored on my hard disk. If you use Lightroom Classic, it's local, right? You still have to pay the subscription if you're using the current version, but it's on your computer. You can say, hey, open Lightroom. It makes a catalog. Lightroom asks you, do you want to import photos? You say, yes, here's my photos. Lightroom says, hey, do you want to leave these where they're at or copy them to a new location? The bottom line is that Lightroom Classic is the best. It has significantly more features than the Lightroom Cloud, Lightroom CC. You edit here, it's non-destructive, and when you wanna commit that image to the world, you go and you right-click and you just go to Export, and there's all kinds of settings and presets for export that makes Lightroom really efficient. So I can export a thousand images and say, hey, let's do these all at 2000 pixels. And I'm gonna add a plugin like Lightroomography to put my signature in the corner, right? So there's a lot of little things. Let's compare these two images here with the C key, right? And I can bring them up and compare side by side. Now these images aren't that close, but if I was doing a session where I wanted to compare this, this kind of stuff is really useful. And this feature, for example, is one that at least as of the recording of this video doesn't exist. This is a fundamental user feature that Lightroom users use all the time. It doesn't exist in the Lightroom desktop cloud version. Let's move over and let's look at the cloud version. And then I'm gonna do a little compare and contrast because the third one is the mobile version and that ties into all this as well. Okay, so if I come over here again, this 
is Lightroom, as they're calling it. See, they just call this Lightroom now, all right? So we go to what they're calling Lightroom, which is really Lightroom Cloud, and we see a different interface. It's a little bit stripped down. Not that it's bad. It's a pretty good interface. You can do your edits over here. You can add photos. You can have albums, which are the same effectively as collections in Lightroom Classic. Over here, you have your develop tool. So you can pull up these tools and these are the same, the same controls that you have in Lightroom Classic, the same controls that you have in Camera Raw and Photoshop. You can use presets. So the same presets that I make uh, and use for Lightroom Classic, I also have right here in Cloud as well. And I can apply all of those to my heart's content. So what's the disadvantage of using this? If this is the newer version, right? It's the cleaner interface. Why use Lightroom Classic? Well. There's a lot of little reasons. One, if you have a lot of photos and you're actively shooting, you probably wanna manage those on a hard drive and then do a backup to a cloud service like, like Backblaze, like CrashPlan or something like that for your emergency backup. What you do in Lightroom Cloud is going to upload everything to the cloud. So the nice thing is you have a backup providing you can rely on Adobe to keep that safe, right? So you can add photos to your disk from your camera, from your phone, for example, upload them here to Lightroom desktop cloud version, and they're gonna upload to the cloud. Now, it won't erase them from your hard drive, but it's, it's kind of managing everything in the cloud. Well, once you fill that up, Adobe's gonna charge you more for that store. You can fill up that 100 gigabyte limit of Lightroom cloud in a week, easily, if you're shooting a lot the tagging tools, the categorizing tools, the collections, the comparing, the ability to print in Lightroom Classic, the ability to make books, it's a professional tool. But if you wanna keep it simple, you don't have to use every tool. And that's the thing about Lightroom Classic. When you come over to Lightroom Cloud Desktop, you see we have this fairly straightforward interface. Sure, we still have the mask tools that were introduced this year. We still have all the develop tools. So you can do the fundamentals and, and do really well with them. But you see when you come over to Lightroom Classic, you have a lot more and there's a lot more little features tucked in here. You can do things like add plugins that add functionality. For example, the Mogrify plugin that I use that I can use to put borders and put my, my logo or my signature in the corner and then save that as a preset and literally come in here and just right click go to export and use that saved preset that has my signature built in right there. So there's a lot of little things that you can do in Lightroom Classic that you're not gonna be able to do in Lightroom Desktop Web. So why, why use it? Well, the answer is you shouldn't. There's really no need because you're paying the same anyway. If you're going to get these features, you're gonna get this Lightroom subscription and you're, you're essentially gonna have both. It's not like they're charging you less to just use the Lightroom desktop cloud. The tie-in point of all these is Lightroom mobile. Now, this is where it gets interesting because all the things I do here in Lightroom Classic or in Lightroom Cloud, I can come right over to here and I can put in Lightroom mobile because I've been doing a lot of testing with Lightroom mobile and synchronizing and all this stuff with the new Mobi presets pack I just made, which is dedicated to getting great results on photos taking on mobiles, on action cams, on small sensors, because I got frustrated with those being overcooked. While most of the time my tools and presets or workshops are known for being, you know, for professional cameras and big sensors and all this stuff, I wanted something that had that aesthetic, those recipes, but that worked on mobile. Whereas when I use silver, when I use Filmis, yes, sometimes they look great, but sometimes they overcooked. So I created a pack for mobile that is just balanced. You can actually get that pack for free if you buy any of my other packs. I'll put links down in the comments if you wanna check out that or any of the others. I think a lot of people don't realize how powerful Lightroom Mobile has become because when Lightroom Mobile launched, it was, it was kind of kludgy. But now you can import presets, you can do your workflow, you can sync things, you can do masks. It's really powerful. So Lightroom Mobile is actually far more exciting to me than the cloud desktop version of Lightroom. Everything we saw in that cloud desktop version is here in Lightroom Mobile. So I can go here and say, here's a, take a collection, right? And I can take those same collections that you saw over here on the screen and let's just take a photo. Here's one that I actually shot 
on a mobile phone, right? Let's take this one and open it up. And just for a point of reference, I'm gonna go down here. And we're just gonna reset it, right? Here's what it came off the, the phone as, right? So I imported it right from my phone into Lightroom. I can now go in here and have all the edits that I would normally use. I can come in here and I can crop, I can play around with this, click the check mark up here. I can go down here and I have all my exposure controls, my highlights, my shadows. And yes, I even have presets and I can simply click and like here's the Mobi presets and I can just apply a preset. I can apply gradients. I can even speed that up. Even, even the speed masks that I recently released uh, will work here in Lightroom Mobile. So all the essential develop functionality is in Lightroom Mobile and it's doing these smart previews and all this stuff. You can zoom in, you can edit, you can control grain and tone and colors, all this cool stuff that really isn't normal to have this level of control on a mobile. But let me show you something. Let's go back to the desktop here and let's go to Lightroom Web Cloud Desktop. You can see that that image we just edited is already in here. So now if I edit it here, it's gonna also show when I go back to edit it on my mobile. I can click here and you see I have all my collections and all that kind of stuff. So I could go to this collection here that says mobile JPEG, right? And you can see here's the images and I have those edits, including this one that I just did, all right? Here's where it gets pretty crazy. I can go to Lightroom Classic and I can go down here to my collections in Lightroom Classic and let's click that mobile JPEG. See this little mark on the edge. If you look here on the side, see this little check mark. It's very small. It's kind of like a little lightning bolt. Stop this syncing with Lightroom or I can click on one that's not and say click to sync this collection. So this collection is synced, right? So if I click this mobile JPEG collection, what do I get? The exact same photo I just uploaded from my mobile phone, ed took on a mobile phone, edited in Lightroom Mobile, it synced to Lightroom. And by just having it in the collection that was synced with Lightroom Classic, it's now in Lightroom Classic, and I now have all the features of Lightroom Classic on that same image. A quick tip on this, when you bring these into Lightroom Classic, in Lightroom Cloud, it's uploading right from your phone, it's putting it on the cloud, and it's on the cloud. So where does it go when you come into Lightroom Classic? Well, if you come into Lightroom Classic, you may know that if you right click on a photo, you can click Show in Explorer or Show in Finder, and it brings up the location of that image right here. Well, guess what? I decided the location of that. So if you actually go to preferences in Lightroom and you go to Lightroom Sync, you can go right down here and you can specify the location where it's going to import all those synced images. You can actually define where on your hard disk it's going to be storing those images. And that's actually pretty cool as well. Right here, we have the little cloud corner in the corner, cloud icon in the corner of here. Okay, so if I look at the cloud icon, you can see that I'm logged in and it's syncing with the cloud. Now, I haven't upgraded my storage. I only sync a few photos. You can see if you look over here that I have a few collections like my portfolio, like maybe a project I'm working on for a current presets pack or something, but you can see that this is the same thing. If I click on cloud in the Lightroom desktop cloud version, I have that same information right up here. So there's a direct connection between Lightroom desktop cloud and Lightroom classic traditional Lightroom. Anything I sync here, so for example, I can make a smart collection here in Lightroom classic and say, give me a smart collection that is all my five star photos from this time period. And I actually do have a collection just like this, five star 21, there's 2000 photos here. So rather than have to sync my entire library, which is 135,000 images, I can simply select the collection, the smart collection that I want synced with Lightroom. And the reality is I don't even need to really use the Lightroom cloud desktop version. I'm really doing this to make these available on the mobile. Because if I'm out somewhere and I'm like, oh, I got an idea, I should edit that photo I just took. I don't have to wait. It's right here. 
and I can edit it right here with the same develop settings and tools non-destructively and it's gonna sync back and when I come back to the office, the edit that I made is going to be in there. So if you're a photographer, you might be thinking, oh, I'm new, I should just use the web desktop version. That's probably not even true. There's way more videos, there's way more content, there's way more resources on Lightroom Classic on the full version. But my main editing system is absolutely here in Lightroom Classic. And my mobile editing, I don't bother at this point since I'm paying for that subscription anyhow, I don't bother with a, a bunch of other mobile photo editing apps because Lightroom at this point is really good on the mobile. To have this level of functionality on mobile is, is astounding. Photoshop, where does Photoshop? Well, Photoshop is where you do higher level pixel edits, layering. If you follow me, you know I talk about using presets and developing tools and, and workflow and batch and copy and paste to edit in Lightroom, right? But when I wanna refine an image, burn, dodge, layer, do atmospheric edits, I do that in Photoshop. Now you can access Camera Raw in Photoshop. In fact, if you go up here to the filter menu, you'll see that the Camera Raw filter is right here and we can open the Camera Raw tool and you see we have all these same settings all over again, the same tools right down to preset. And so I could come in here and apply some tweaks or a preset or something like that and then press OK. And I, that way I can use these tools right within Photoshop. I occasionally use Camera Raw in Photoshop just for a quick edit. Yes, you can use Camera Raw from Adobe Bridge. And the problem is, even though it's the same raw, right? The editing engine, the raw is the same across all these. The sliders we have available is the same across all of these. The features of the interface and the app that we're using are what differ. Camera Raw is what we used before Lightroom existed. And yes, you could use Bridge and you can use Camera Raw and then you could copy settings to a thousand photos, right? That you made in Camera Raw. You had presets in Camera Raw. So Camera Raw was the beginning of all this before Lightroom. And then Lightroom came along and it just added a lot of interface, a lot of usability tools, things like printing and exporting and controlling. So I go to Photoshop to do advanced edits, to run actions, to do atmospheric things like Blackroom or Loomist or Alchemist actions, things like that when I want to get serious about an edit and do more with it and really refine it. That's where I go to Photoshop. The truth is that the cloud desktop version of Lightroom should not exist. I think probably Adobe created that hoping to transition their business model to a more cloud model where they could make more money. And us photographers didn't really go for it. It doesn't make sense for most photographers to have all their images in the cloud by default. Yes, you should back up to the cloud somewhere. Otherwise you do risk losing everything. But that stripped down version of Lightroom didn't make things simpler. It actually made things more complicated, Adobe. And I would guess at some point they will both be merged together into one Lightroom. And I hope Adobe doesn't screw that up and take away a bunch of features. For most of you, use Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Mobile. If you find for some reason that the Lightroom Cloud desktop version is better for you, I'm actually curious to hear about it. Leave me a comment or just leave me a comment anyway. Let me know what you think. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. I hope you guys found this useful. I'll put some links in the comments and please do head over to my site, check out some of the products I've been working on and the new projects and the new videos and tips and stuff over on the blog over at simefx.com. I'll link some stuff for you guys there. We'll see you next time.